Hi everyone, welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edpedia World. The last lecture discussed about the atomic structure, specifically the Bohr's model and the wave mechanical model. And we concluded the lecture by saying that this lecture will discuss about the quantum numbers. So let's start with the idea about quantum numbers and the different kinds of quantum numbers. So as I said previously, each electron has a specific address which represents the kind of location, if you may, where a atom is located in a, where an electron is located in an atom. Now the whole address or whole set of numbers which are used to define the state of the electron is characterized by four different quantum numbers as we will see in this discussion. The first quantum number which is the most important one is known as the principal quantum number. It is represented by a small n and what does it signify? It signifies the shell number that is which shell are we talking about? Which shell does the electron lie? What property does the principal quantum number imply? It shows us what is the distance of the electron from the nucleus. And uh, this is the most important quantum number with respect to the energy of the electron. So higher the quantum number, the principal quantum number, you can say that it will have higher energy. There are other factors which define energy too those other quantum numbers will be discussed and we'll see the exact criteria on which the energy depends but given no other information the energy of an electron will increase with the increase in principal quantum number now how is principal quantum number represented principal quantum number is represented by k l m n or 1 2 3 4 where k represents the first shell L the second and henceforth. And now this concept of principal quantum number can be directly derived from the Bohr's model. There the orbits that we saw on in which the electrons used to revolve around the nucleus were the principal quantum number equivalent. Right? Now the rest three quantum numbers are more based on the wave mechanical model. Let's see them. Second thing Second quantum number is azimuthal quantum number represented by a small l. What does this signify? As the principal quantum number signified the shell, azimuthal quantum number signifies the subshell. What does that mean? That means that a shell is further divided into many subshells and this azimuthal quantum number signifies which subshell are we talking about and uh, what is the physical property it manifests? It manifests in the shape of the orbital. The subshell, different kinds of subshell has different kind of shape. So the azimuthal quantum number gives the shape to the orbital to the subshell. This also shows the orbital angular momentum. It represents uh, physically the orbital angular momentum of the electrons. How is it represented? It is represented by either as S, P, D, F. This is the representation where S is the lowest energy subshell, P, then D, then F, or by the L numbers corresponding to a 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, when we say S as the azimuthal quantum number, the shape of a S orbital is spherical. It is spherically symmetric, whereas P is more of a dumbbell shaped. Similarly, each specific orbital has a specific shape. So that is what I meant when I said that the azimuthal quantum number defines the shape of the orbital. So now you know what is the principal quantum number, you know what is the azimuthal quantum number. Next, let's see what is the magnetic quantum number represented by a small m. Magnetic quantum number is the number of energy states per subshell. What we have seen is initially we had cell and that was divided into subshells 
and now magnetic quantum number further divides the subshell into energy states right and what are this energy states specifically this energy states in the absence of magnetic field are no different they all are identical but in presence of a magnetic field the subshells are split with a slightly varying energy right therefore we will have different subshells within a single azimuthal quantum number and those split subshells are identified by different magnetic quantum numbers so now you get an idea about the third quantum number and what is the range of a magnetic quantum number the range of magnetic quantum number is basically m ranging from minus l to plus l including a zero what does that mean that means if we are inside the first azimuthal quantum number that is l is equal to 1 then my magnetic quantum number will range from minus 1 to plus 1 including 0 what i mean is suppose i have l is equal to 1 then my m will be either minus 1 or 0 or a plus 1 okay similarly if l is 2 then m will range from minus 2 to plus 2 including 0 so this is my third quantum number amongst the four quantum numbers that are used to define a electron in an atom what is the final quantum number we need to talk about the final quantum number is known as the spin quantum number represented by a small s the electron within a single within a particular m within a particular magnetic quantum number can have two possible states it can either spin with a plus half spin or it can spin with a minus half spin so these are the two possible spins a electron can have thereby what it means is that the spin quantum number can have only two possible spin orientation either a plus half or a minus half and it signifies the spin angular momentum therefore a electron to have a particular address identifiable from other electrons it should have a unique combination of the four quantum numbers to illustrate what i just said let's say we have two electrons electron 1 and electron 2 we need to have n l m and s right let's say we are in the first energy level or the first principal quantum number then my n will be 1 both electrons are in the same principal quantum number both are one and if n is one then one thing which i forgot to mention is that the azimuthal quantum number should range from 0 to n minus 1 okay so if the n is one then azimuthal quantum number can only be a zero if n is 2 then corresponding to that electrons can have a azimuthal quantum number of either 1 or zero this is an important thing that azimuthal quantum number ranges from 0 to n minus 1 therefore for this case the only possibility of l is zero for both the cases isn't it and given l is zero we have seen that the magnetic quantum number ranges from minus l to plus l including zero therefore for l is equal to zero m only possibility is zero okay still now for both electron 1 and 2 the address seems identical isn't it therefore the fourth quantum number or the spin quantum number needs to be opposite for these two electrons to coexist two electrons cannot coexist with same four quantum numbers therefore if this is plus half this has to be minus half this is the story about the different quantum numbers now as i said previously the principal quantum number is kind of basically derived from the bohr's model this represents the orbit number whereas the rest three quantum numbers is uh, supposedly coming from the wave mechanical model fine now let us discuss about the energy levels the relative energy levels here we have seen the different quantum numbers and what i said is the most important quantum number to define the energy 
is the principal quantum number. Higher the n, higher the energy, given everything else is same. But as we will see in this discussion, obviously, as you can see, for n is equal to 1, sorry, this is the principal quantum number and this is the energy. So for lowest principal quantum number, the energy is least. For n is equal to 2, all the possible subcells has low energy. Similarly, if we compare for the same thing, like if we compare S here, S here, S here, we'll see that it keeps on increasing. But as we introduce the other uh, quantum numbers, like this is S means azimuthal quantum number is 0, whereas P means azimuthal quantum number is 1, D means azimuthal quantum number is 2. So once we diversify the other quantum numbers, there are some overlaps, right? These two are quite clear, lowest energy, next lowest energy. But in the three, principal quantum number C, three, what we see is though S and P follows the order directly from the principal quantum number, D lies at higher energy than S of four principal quantum number. And why is it so? We'll see in the next slide. This comes from what is known as Aufwau's rule. Okay? But uh, holistically you can see that basically there is a trend that with increasing principal quantum number, the energy increases. Now we'll see with our background about the basic quantum numbers, how are the electrons arranged in an atom? Driving principles. First, Pauli's exclusion principle. What Pauli's exclusion principle states is that no two electrons can have all the four quantum numbers same in an atom as I already discussed that if there are two atoms they should have different address set. Same state electron have opposite spin as I demonstrated in the last slide isn't it? Now if I want to see how this is to be explained. Let's take an example with higher n where n is 2. Now for n is 2, what can be the azimuthal quantum number? It can be either 0 or 1. 0 means s and 1 means p. Now for a 0 azimuthal quantum number, the magnetic quantum number will be only 0. Whereas for l is equal to 1, m can be either minus 1, 0 or 1. Okay, and under each of them, the spin quantum number can be plus half or minus half. Therefore, with n is equal to 2, what are the set of possible electrons addresses? Let me write it down. n is equal to 2 for all the cases. L is either 0 or L is 1. For 0, m is 0. For L is equal to 1, M is minus 1, 0 or 1 and corresponding to that S is either a plus half, minus half, plus half, minus half, this also a plus half and a minus half and plus half and minus half. Therefore what we see is under the principal quantum number n is equal to 2, we can have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons. And the formula which gives you the number of electrons under a principal quantum number is basically 2 times n square. So using this, you can say that for n is equal to 2, the number of electrons will be 8. If n were 1, then the number of electrons would be 2. If n were 3, then the number of electrons would be 18. And you can extrapolate and calculate for other values of n. So the bottom line is Pauli's exclusion principle gives you an idea that no two electrons can have same address for all the four electrons. Now next, let's see Aufwau principle. What it states is that the electrons fill the lowest available energy level before filling the higher energy level. This is basically energy minimization. First the electrons will go to lower energy, then to higher energy. And how to find the lowest energy state? As I said, the most apparent thing is that lower the L, lower the energy, but the actual rule is lower the N plus L. 
that is lower the principal quantum number plus azimuthal quantum number lower is the energy this is the complete rule and that will give you the distribution v arrangement in the order in which the electrons will be filled in the orbitals so 1s is first then 2s then 2p 3s 3p 4s similarly and here is what you can see that this one here you are filling 3s after that 3p then 4s and 4s is filled before 3d right if the energy level was dependent only on the value of n then 3d would have filled before 4s but that is not the case next let us see what is known as hund's rule hund's rule states that every orbital in a particular sub level is initially occupied by single electrons before any orbital is doubly occupied i'll give you an example to illustrate the point and also it states that every singly occupied electron has same spin what i mean is that if we have nitrogen nitrogen has seven electrons the first two goes to 1s then to 2s now we have three possible sub orbitals in p right in 2p we have these three possible orbitals so what Hund's rule state is that each orbital will get a single electron first with parallel spins that is spin in the same direction before filling up the orbitals so nitrogen has like this similar spin electrons filled first and the next element that is oxygen then it starts to fill up the two electrons the possible two states of electrons filled up okay this basically represents the electron these arrows and upward is one kind of spin and downward is another kind of spin so now you have seen that the pauli's exclusion principle afwaus principle and hund's rule give you a holistic picture about how the electrons are filled in an atom right uh, today's discussion has been quite exhaustive so just to recap we saw we saw the different quantum numbers we understood what those are then we saw the energy distribution based on the quantum numbers we saw the rules first the pauli's exclusion rule then we saw the afwaus principle then we saw the hund's rule okay now the next lecture what we'll do is uh, we'll jump into the other aspect of atomic structure that is the interatomic forces between atoms now we have seen the atomic structure the basic but between two atoms or between two molecules there are interatomic forces what are those forces and how do they influence the property we'll understand that we'll see what is binding force and correspondingly what is binding energy so hopefully you picked up some idea from today's lecture and we'll build on those ideas and understand further in the next lecture have a great day Goodbye